UK drill began with raw, gritty lyrics that came straight from the streets. In its early days, the heavy beats and hard-hitting lyrics captured the tough realities of urban life. However, today, many believe UK drill has changed and no longer holds the same essence as it once did. Drill is definitely tired and we should let it rest in peace, to be honest. Fun while it lasted. Grime will outlive drill. But where did it all begin? The rivalry between 67 and 150. Two groups from South London played a crucial role that would mark the start of UK drill. These two factions turned their street conflicts into diss tracks and raw aggressive lyrics that would soon define the sound of UK drill. This beef became a template for the genre. They're selling crack and beating people up, but they weren't actually doing it. Drill has a true crime component to where drill fans want to know that the person rapping about catching bodies does in fact kill people. Rumble in the jungle, this ain't no six. This ain't no six. This ain't no six. Say this ain't rumble in the jungle, this ain't no six. This ain't no six. This ain't all sick. What began as lyrical competition soon escalated into real life violence. On February 25th, 2014, a tragic event unfolded that would forever alter the drill scene. Incy, a member of 67, found himself in enemy territory where 150 was based. When he spotted a member of 150, the chase began. In a desperate effort to protect his friend, SQ intervened but was cornered in an alley. NC attacked, stabbing SQ multiple times, which led to SQ's tragic death. After the tragic death of SQ, the rivalry between 67 and 150 intensified, with rising tensions spilling over into their music. In the midst of this escalating conflict, police started actively targeting drill music videos. ...where individuals are putting up videos, taunting other groups, uh, and then causing violence, uh, then that's, it's, it's a catalyst. These videos are a catalyst for violence and YouTube should be doing more to get rid of them to stop that catalyst happening. Which hurted their ability to reach audiences, causing artists to become more cautious about their lyrical content. As a result, many began self-censoring their work to avoid attracting police scrutiny. They had 15 million plus views are, were due to start making money from the music industry and leave this cycle of violence and go legitimate, like other UK rap artists such as Giggs, 67 and Jay Huss. These people are rapping about their environment, fix poverty and there wouldn't be any drill music. They are just products of their environment. All the band does is put them back to square one and gives them more of a motive to keep selling drugs and warring with rival gang members. This literally makes the situation 10 times worse. The use of drill music as evidence in court cases also began escalating. Lyrics and music videos became accepted for evidence in trials, further censoring the genre. Was involved in the killing and he sent a postcode around where that person might possibly be. Um, no harm from which came. There was no attack on the individual that was named. So it's eight years essentially for sending three messages in a telegram group. Yep, absolutely. In court, police used drill to back up the gang claims playing music videos like this involving some of the boys. Over time, drill artists became more raw in their storytelling. As the genre gained popularity, many found that more explicit and aggressive content drew greater attention. Tracks featuring graphic realities and confrontational narratives became common. Right? You hear a track and it says some crazy lyrics in there. It gets views. The crazier the things you say, the more plays it's gonna get on Spotify. People are trying to succeed, man. They're seeing that guy drop music and say some outrageous stuff. So they're thinking, how can I outdo him? Let me say something even more outrageous. But to the police, it's like, he said, what? However, many artists faced severe consequences for their bold expressions in drill music. Tragically, the genre has seen several artists lose their lives, serving as heartbreaking reminders of how quickly the cycle of UK drill can escalate as violence linked 
to UK drill music increased. Police and authorities felt a pressing need to take more drastic action. We're not entitled to rights like you guys are in America and that, it's these details that make America a great country like you're entitled to you know your guns, your free speech. We don't have that and you know yeah they, the, the Met Police like it's mainly in London they do crack down on certain artists like certain people aren't allowed to say certain things and the courts will take down their videos they'll write they'll send an injunction to YouTube and YouTube have to comply. You know people get mad at YouTube it's like oh YouTube taking down this drill video in the UK but it's the it's the police it's the Met Police they actually have the power to do that. Many artists began using more abstract language and coded references in their lyrics. This approach allowed them to avoid directly mentioning violence or gang affiliations. It showed that even under immense pressure, drill music could still thrive. Some drill artists took things a step further by filming music videos right in their rivals' territories. By daring to enter enemy grounds, they made bold statements through their visuals. Some studies suggest that young listeners of drill music may feel pressure to connect with the narratives presented in the songs. This connection can lead them to adopt similar lifestyles in an effort to gain respect or recognition from their peers. And all I see in the streets are hundreds of 20 something year old kids in Nike Tech, head to toe, Hood Rich, Trap Star, head to toe, Black Air Force Ones. They all had fades. Um, some kids had face masks. Bro, there's no post code wars in Iceland. There's no there's no Rambo knives. There's no Sheffins. There's no Mandem in Iceland. The peak of UK drill music is often recognized as occurring between 2018 to 2021. This was a time of explosive growth and mainstream success for the genre. During these years, UK drill captured the attention of audiences both in the UK and internationally. Artists began achieving significant short success and building massive followings. And I knew I could make more songs like it. I know mm. I can make, I know, I know I can jump on any kind of beat, really. So I had that song there, I, I dropped it and I'd, I'd done well. I didn't know what to put out next. So respect, I respect. Really, man. Being a this fast. It's good still, it's good, it's good. Yeah, you catching up, you catching up with it, you catching up with it? Yeah. Was it all a little bit much? It's a, it's a lot to take in. It's a lot, it's a lot. It's a short time, but. Making money, supporting my family. A lot's changed still. Are you calm? I'm super gassed for you because I'm that excitable guy. But I think time's never been so good to be in this UK thing as a producer, as an artist. Yeah, I agree still. Yeah. Like, everyone's trying to ting it and there's a lot of big things are happening. Mm. People are going far. Really far. The influence of UK drill started to extend beyond the UK with international artists like Pop Smoke and Fivio Foreign starting to integrate elements of their genre into their music. And the sound is very, it's like a celebration. It's a celebration of what's going on over here, what's yeah. going on over there. I tweeted yesterday, right? UK producers run New York. And the reason why I did the tweet was because Oh, that was you, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you trolling, man. <laughs> but, but you know, you know, the reason why I did it was because, you know, my friend texted me. He's like, Sam, I'm in New York. This sound, this this drill sound, it's like you come out of a car, you hear it. You go to a shop, you hear it. It's in every club. It's in restaurants. It's like, it's everywhere. It's taking over. So that's, that's why I was like, UK producers were New York. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> if there's any time I could do it, it's now. Nigga, it's you like, ain't wrong. It's definitely, it's definitely bigger than it ever been. Yeah, definitely. You know what I'm saying? My beats come from like the UK. I'm saying art like produced from the UK. So the sound, the sound is like definitely influenced. I'm saying like. So what eventually led to the decline of UK drill music? Well, there are many factors. Last year, a significant report emerged revealing that the police made an astonishing 1,800 requests to remove rap videos from YouTube. It's not just about the music 
many drill artists are living the lives they rap about and the consequences are very real. Numerous rappers are currently facing prison time or deeply involved in street life. Oh, um, road rage fight, that guy had a knife. He's dead. Um, it's the most random deaths ever. So imagine being a target and you rap. And no offense, rappers are targeted individuals. They die more than anything. I remember back then I dropped a, a song with Shoki. He was dead a week or two after. So now I'm thinking, bro, I just made a song with my man. Everyone's saying he's popping, now he's dead. So what can't that happen to me? Drill is dead. It's dead cause you already heard every diss, every mention, every bar, every flow. It's repetitive as f there's barely anything that stands out. The UK drill scene has become somewhat oversaturated in recent years. While there are many talented artists, the influx of imitators looking to ride the trend has resulted in a lot of music that is often considered mediocre. The rise of platforms like TikTok has changed how music is created and consumed. Artists are now focusing on making catchy and easily shareable tracks, which has led them to move away from the traditional drill formula. Indicates that UK drill as we once knew it have eventually sadly come to an end.